Behind me, I have a lot of beautiful memories. This is the church where I married my wife. I baptized my beloved son. And it makes me think a bit how the bells in Flacht sounds when Porsche is baptizing their engines. I have a lot of respect for the 997. In fact, it's the same respect as I have for the 993. Each time Porsche changes the wheelbase, enthusiasts like myself retires, declaring that they have had enough changes. Those people that retire are very important from my perspective preserving the brand's history, taking care of the 997 or if it is the 993. From their perspective, that's the last of its breed. Eventually, the 911 needs to change. Regulations from governments is changing and also to cope with the new demands that the younger generation are eager to have the car grows. And um, if you don't change the wheelbase, the distance from the center of the wheel to the very end of the car is growing. At one point it will grow too much, losing its balance and the wheelbase needs to be changed. But changing the wheelbase does not only affect design, it also has an impact on the handling of the vehicle. A car with a shorter wheelbase will be more ideal around the corners, whereas the cars with longer wheelbase will be much, much more stable in high st speeds. This creates a lot of dialects in the 911 religion, which 911 is the purest of the purest. And I have a lot of respect for those that have retired and decided that this is the end for me. From this point, I will not move forward, preserving the history. But for people like me that are still in the developing phase, wondering when, when, which is the last 9-11, and you may say that I might be the most stupid one, but I am waiting for the wheelbase to grow to be able to fit batteries in the 9-11. Batteries or not, in the future 911 models, when changes are made, the conservative Porsche community is not far from the guillotine. This model, the Carrera 4S, where the number stands for all-wheel drive, is important. I would like to take the opportunity to refresh our memories from a video reviewing the 1970s 911S model. The S stands for the attributes to the driver's man, driver's woman, but without showing off in the design. Keeping it clean at a high gentleman status. That's why we have the S model. And some models are even more special. This is what I'm talking about. The Porsche exclusive power kit X51 as it is called on the Carrera S models. Having the engine baptized in Flacht makes a huge difference. And you could argue that, well, you know, you could buy a GTS. That's not the same thing, ladies and gentlemen, because if you buy a GTS, you will get all the other attributes included, 
making it more flashy. This is a solid sleeper for a gentleman that wants to enjoy the proper ride. And it doesn't stop with the engine. This car is equipped with a sport shifter, making the, the gear changes much more accurate, more metallic, more distinct, shorter, giving more driving pleasure. Whoa, 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 whoa. Please come back to me. Don't get distracted of the red interior, please. Listen to me, I'm gonna to explain to you why it's good looking. Remember the 991.2 Carrera GTS I reviewed last summer? It had jet black metallic as this one and a red top. When you have a bright color, beige, red, blue, doesn't matter, you need to think carefully what color you select on your vehicle. A jet black like this works great with all strong interior color or the gray scales. But as soon as you add white or, or Miami blue, etc., you're gonna get in trouble. But this actually looks great and the silver details that you have in the interior matches great with the wheels. And speaking of the wheels, I think they look great. I'm quite sad that these wheels didn't come over to the 991 series and having them in 20 inch wheels instead. This is 19 inch wheels and uh, I would like actually to have them a bit wider as well. And if I was owning this car, I would actually considering fitting spaces of the rear wheels. The uh, X51 flat baptized engine in this car together with the sport shifter. Yeah, I'm telling you that's a really nice combination. And um, obviously, within this uh, generation of the car, you don't have the auto rev matching that you have to do yourself by heel to heel toe. But I think it is a spectacular engine, especially the row, low revs. I'm more impressed actually of the thrust on the low RPMs than I am when I push the engine over 7,000 RPM. And I believe that the PASM in the 997 generation is actually quite different compared to the 991. With the sort of PASM off or comfort mode, the, um, the, it, it is really a comfort mode compared to the 991. And when I drive the car in, uh, in the B roads, um, I thought that this car should feel much lighter since it is. It's actually 100 kilo lighter compared to the 991, but it doesn't, especially if your 991 is equipped with rear axle steering. Don't worry about a thing, cause you have me won't last long. Just stay with me for a drink and show me a good time. I love you until I'm gone But you only get a sip So show me a good time I don't get The changes that was made on the second generation 997 was actually not that many. In fact, to be honest, the 997 doesn't have much technical changes from the 996. But um, there are a few things. The engine in the Mark II was remade. The um, IMS bearings that the previous model had some issues with was um, addressed with the new engine. And also a direct fuel injection was fitted and the sport exhaust system was remade. The taillights and the front headlamps 
was modified on Gen 2. Actually, the front headlamps could be equipped with HID projectors as an option. The PCM was also upgraded in Mark II. I don't think that matter if you buy your second-hand vehicle today. Actually, less is more in that case. But the navigation was fitted with a hard drive. And also, ladies and gentlemen, with the Mark II of the 997, the PDK gearbox was introduced. Yes, that's where the debate started or the competition. Can I say competition? Doesn't matter. But the debate between the manual and PDK started. If you look at the overall of the 997 compared to the 996, the interior was actually the biggest change. And I, you can go on the YouTube and you can see the reviews that was made. Everybody made a fuss of the cup holders that are still present in the 991. I have started to dream, dream about having a 997 as a daily driver. The reason for that is, is that if I was going on a, a lot of a track day driving, I would most, most likely go to the um, 718 Boxster or the GT models or the 991.2, actually Carrera T. But as a daily driver with the capacity of this engine in the low revs, this is it. I mean, you can really enjoy the 911 feeling in low revs, just giving it like this from two and a half to 4,000 rev and you can actually feel the car accelerating with such a thrust that you actually think that, is it a turbo behind you? But it isn't a turbo behind me, it's just a perfect balance X51 power kit, Porsche engineered flat six. Driving a vehicle that are baptized in flacht is a joy above the most. I know for sure because one of these vehicles I own myself and has done that for over three years. And uh, the Carrera S impresses, especially with the X51 package, bringing the soul and the heritage of Porsche Motorsport and Porsche engineering into the vehicle without putting all the attributes on the vehicle as the GTS does. It creates a gentleman's car.